Hey there, Postal here. Uh, so today we're going to do a quick overview of the most recent patch that just came out today. We're also going to be looking at a holiday maneuvers event that's going on for you to and me to be able to win a tier 8 premium American fighter. Uh, let's go ahead and hop right into it. So we're looking at a saber here. Uh, why is that? Well, I think because uh, one of the biggest impacts of the newest patch is the impact to the American machine guns. Um, yes, we've got we've got uh, a holiday maneuvers event ongoing right now, and that's going to be ongoing um, through January nineteenth, if I recall. Uh, yes, January nineteenth, you'll be able to win an XFY Pogo. XFY1 Pogo Tier 8 American Fighter. We're going to go into details on this plane in just a minute um, and the event itself. But what I wanted to point out, um, as far as I'm concerned, the biggest impact on this particular patch is something that's going to be you know, a long-term impact, and that's the 50 caliber machine guns have been buffed. Those are the 12.7 millimeter machine guns for the Americans or American-derived planes so it could be things like the tomahawk 2b which is chinese but it's an american plane uh, that was sent to the chinese things like the mustang one uh, or is it the 1a i forget i always mix those two up that was sent to the uk and the p39q which was sent to the soviet union those are all american planes technically and so they the machine guns on those planes have been buffed um temper your expectations though some of the um, buffs you will barely even notice, especially these 10% buffs. Um, things like the F2A Buffalo, the YP29, even the Curtis Tomahawk 2B are going to see between 4 and 8 damage per second increases. All right, cool. Um, the, yeah, there's just, okay, there you go. Um, so I think the biggest impact on this list, no, that's not even on this list. This is the next list. So yeah, you're probably not even going to notice the difference on these, but take it. 10% is 10%. Keep in mind that the bonuses here are only for the 12.7 millimeter machine guns, not for the 30 caliber machine guns, which are the 7.92 millimeter machine guns. So any planes, you know, that have the 50 cal, the 50 cals are being buffed. So for instance, the two 50 caliber machine guns on the Tomahawk 2B, are getting that buff, or have gotten that buff, I should say. But the four 30 caliber machine guns that this particular plane has are not impacted by the increase. And so that's why the increase to these particular planes is pretty minimal. Um, there's going to be some bigger increases to these planes here, though. Um, things like, I mean, this is tier three, but even the P35 here um, it has 15 damage per second. But keep in mind, because these are all 20% 20, 20 damage buff to just the, the 50 caliber machine guns, all the way to tier 10. Another, uh, another increase that you're going to see is going to be to the firing range, which is 10%. This might actually have a bigger impact than the damage. If you're able to hit a target sooner, damage increase or no, you're going to be starting to do damage sooner. And that's a, that's a big deal, right? The higher you go, the bigger impact you're going to see. And what I mean by that is um, the higher tiers typically have just more 50 caliber machine guns and less 30 caliber machine guns, and so you're just going to see that impact quicker. Tier 5 here, the P40, for instance, um, you're actually getting a 45 damage per second buff. Same with the uh, P40 M105, the F4F, the XP44. Those are all getting 45 damage per second buff they've, they've received. Uh, P38F Lightning, you're only going to see uh, 30 damage per second. Uh, but keep in mind, I mean, you're do doing most of your damage from with the 37 millimeter cannon, but any additional damage is going to be helpful. Some planes, though, you're going to see a, a relatively paltry impact. The P39s, like I mentioned before, um, they only have these only have two 30, uh, excuse me, two uh, 50 caliber machine guns. You're doing your damage with a 37 millimeter cannon more than anything else. So you're only going to see an 18 damage per second buff with these two planes at tier six. I suspect that's not going to be a whole lot, but as I mentioned before, we'll take every little bit of damage we can get. 
what I was kind of excited to see was what was going to be the, the increase to the P51A, uh, XP55, um, things of that nature, P51D, planes that are kind of seen as um, lowly in their damage output. And it's, it's overall, it's actually very positive in my opinion. I don't think it's going to necessarily change the meta by any means. But like your P51A is going to be getting a basically 41 damage per second buff. Um, your same, same exact damage buff with your XP55. Where you're going to see some pretty significant increases is going to be things like the P47B. P47B, keep in mind, is tier 6. Um, but you've got 8 machine guns. And so you're actually going to be getting a... 72 damage per second increase with this particular plane. That's pretty significant, right? XP50 and the, the P38J again, gonna have kind of low damage increases because th these are more focused on their heavy cannons. But having that kind of increase on the P47B, you're gonna have a very large increase on the XP70, for instance, is gonna be getting 90 damage per second uh, difference. The P47 is getting 83 damage per second. P51D and P51K are getting 62 damage per second. Um, th those, you know, tier 7 and tier 6 planes are getting a, a reasonable buff to both, again, the range is also increasing on a lot of these from between 500 and 520 for the majority of these planes, going up to 550 to 572 meters range. Um, so, uh, you know, take, take everything that you can get when it comes to the impact that those can have. I haven't double checked, but the A26B, even the rear guns are 50 caliber machine gun. So this particular bomber, the A26B, um, don't quote me on this, you'll have to double check, but I think it's 105 damage per second overall output, including the gunners, of course. Um, that's pretty significant, and the A26B didn't really need um, that, but who cares? We won't argue with it. Uh, at tier 8 and above, you're going to see some pretty, pretty significant impacts. Um, Shooting Star is going to the P-80A, a premium plane that's readily available at all times, is getting 86 damage per second buff. P-51H is getting 78 damage buff. Um, XP-72, the F-82E, um, all the tier, um, um, the tier um, 9 and 10 multi-rolls, that's the F-84s. The F-86 and the FJ-1, they're all getting 96 damage per second buff. And their range on their guns is going from 600 meters to 660 meters. Uh, so almost uh, like 21, 2,150 feet basically on those guns. So pretty significant jump up um, on those planes. Um, P-82, I'm really looking, P-82B has 145 damage per second buff. So I'm really looking forward to taking that out. I thought it was pretty crazy beforehand. That's going to be extra crazy. Um, as I mentioned before, though, we still need to temper our expectations. It doesn't suddenly make any of these planes more meta than they were beforehand. In my opinion, the F-86 Sabre was the best fighter to begin with, um, at least in my you know hands. And so, um, I mean, how do I word that? I, th I was better in the F-86 than I was the 1101. Uh, now I'll be even better, better. Uh, but but still, the damage output is not going to be to the point where you're going to say, well, I'm taking out these planes because these planes are now the highest damage. No, no, not at all. Keep in mind, an 1101 still does 800 damage per second base. Now the F-86 Sabre does 576. So you're still going to be short 224 damage per second. Um, you know, Thunderstreak at tier 10 does that same 576 damage per second. Compare that to a hunter that does 1,300 damage per second. You're still like less than half the damage output of a hunter, right? Um, you know, same story can be said with the Fury compared to the the 1092. The, the these planes are not suddenly now the the can do everything kind of thing as far as damage output is concerned. No, the focus with these planes should still be their other impacts, their flexibility with their maneuverability or their speed or their altitude or their ability to do the ground damage, whatever plane you're talking about. And so the damage and range buff that you receive with any of these planes shouldn't make you think, oh, now I, I hated the plane before, now I'm going to love it. 
If you didn't like the plane before, I highly doubt a 20% buff to the damage output is going to change your mind on that. It could. I'd still tell you to take that. But I mean, most of the comments that have been in my Discord have been, oh yeah, I do like the, you know, the XP75 is, is more um, impactful now, but I still prefer the VB10. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to have those kind of opinions. Oh, the F86A is, you know, doing a little bit more damage, but I prefer, still prefer the 1101 or the MIG or whatever plane that you prefer at that tier. And so I'm not sure this, this buff's going to necessarily change mines. What it's probably going to do is help those that are still grinding these lines. Um, who haven't had to live with or learn to live with, um, you know, learn to live with the, the poultry damage output. It'll help those pilots more than making other pilots come back and stick with these planes. I always like the P51H and the F86A, so certainly not gonna, you know, not gonna um, make me sad about any of those changes. Um, but is it going to make me think that these are like the you know, the top tier at the, I mean, the top dogs at this tier? I'm not sure about that yet. Uh, I'll keep you posted though. I did want to make one other note here. The F4U was uh, the, the Corsairs basically. The F4U one, the F4U four um, are really not. Where is the F? There it is. Is not really impacted by this change. It's on this list. Same with the XF5U Pancake. Keep in mind the 50 caliber machine guns for those three planes are the stock guns. Great, there's a little buff to the, the damage output. The first thing you want to do in any one of those three planes is get the next tier guns. The, those planes actually end up with 20 millimeter cannons that are very, very strong for their tier in each instance. Uh, they overheat quickly, but they do good damage. So your goal in the F4Us and the Pancake is to just get, get rid of the stock guns as quickly as possible and get the 20 millimeter cannons. So I didn't really mention those because the impact is is negligible because you're only going to hopefully have those guns for a few matches anyway. Um, so yeah, so that's a pretty big impact. The reason I want to talk about this first was because you know, that is an impact that will be sticking with us, where the um, event is you know going to be for a little bit more than a month. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm definitely excited to take out the F86. Don't get me wrong. I mean I love this plane anyway. I thought it was the best tier ten fighter. As much as I love the Swift, which I do, and I love the 1101, which I do, and I love the LA-15, which I do, um, the F-86 has always been my favorite at Tier 10, and you know this is just going to reinforce that and uh, make me a happy camper for sure. All right, so why do I have the P-80A sitting here in my lovely snowy hangar uh, from three years ago now, this hangar is? But whatever, it's different than a normal hangar, and we'll take it. I do wish they'd take away the uh, the British multi-rolls that uh, that were going for this event. And I also, side note question, the delivery, the gifts delivery, I forget if the sign was here previously at all times or not. So it makes me wonder about these time frames, if there's anything uh, special going on in the hangar. Um, we'll have to, somebody will have to tell me because I typically work during those times, yay. Anyway, so we're looking at the P80. Uh, simply because it's the one of the three planes that I have that we'll be comparing to the XFY-1. Let's take a look at how you can win the XFY-1 first, and then we're going to see if it's even worth that. Um, how do you earn these candy canes? Because that's the whole goal here is to get a bunch of candy canes, and as you get candy canes, you'll be going down this lovely path, 600 candy canes, in fact, to be able to try to win this plane. Well, candy canes are earned by doing your daily missions, actually. Um, so as you do your daily missions, which means I'm going to have to go down to Tier 4, which is just okay, um, you will be getting different amounts of candy canes. If you do what they call the easy um, daily missions, which are the ones that earn you one token, you get one candy cane. If you complete a medium um, daily mission, which are the ones that you can earn four tokens on, you will be getting a two candy canes. And as you get a hard um, daily mission, you can get three candy canes. That's the one that you would normally get 10 tokens. I mean, my opinion on the, the daily missions is I don't really like the way that, that Wargaming has the daily missions set up. It forces you to go down to tier four and completely stomp on people that are down there. It is also, some of the missions are just kind of ridiculous. Um, it, like, you know, trying to do like 50,000 ground damage at tier four, stuff like that. Luckily, none of mine are like that. 
Looks like I will be doing some tier four missions or tier one, two, three, whatever period one is what it is. Um, dailies to try to get these. Um, obviously, you can only get the dailies once per day, so that means maximum you can get from the dailies is six per day. Which means the maximum you're going to be able to get from the dailies is going to be right around 180. I'm saying right around because I'm not going to calculate if it's 183 or 188. It doesn't matter. Um, the amount that you're going to be able to get is obviously nowhere near the 600 that you would need to get. So dailies is not how you're going to necessarily get these missions. You can only get not even a third of your overall candy canes can be earned from your daily missions. So don't necessarily make your daily missions your goal. Definitely helpful, but it's not necessarily your goal. The goal is going to be, you may have noticed here already, every time you get 8,000 personal points in a game, you can earn a candy cane. So this is probably going to be the easiest way for me to be able to get candy canes. Uh, it doesn't say win a win or a loss, luckily. So let's get 8,000 personal points and you're going to be able to earn a candy cane. Um, and you know that means I'm gonna be playing a lot of games, right? Um, 400 games probably in the next uh, four weeks. It's gonna be a lot of games. Um, it's not insurmountable and it's not, you know, uh, I mean, there's people that do that in, in a normal month anyway. So yeah, I'm sure I can do that. And I'm sure you can too, but we shall see. Um, what do you earn with these candy canes? Well, I mean, just one candy cane will get you a badge. That's pretty cool. Um, oh, you also get 15 fireworks that nobody uses. Got an idea for fireworks. Me and Sniper Sun have talked about it before. Um, wish uh, Wargaming would implement it where on your um, service equipment here that there was a locked consumable in the cockpit. Uh, an extra consumable that was always available but only for fireworks and streamers and smoke and stuff like that. Right now, nobody uses... You know, nobody uses fireworks. Nobody uses, I sell all my smoke, in fact. Um, or the sparklers. Nobody uses that kind of stuff because why would you use fireworks instead of your first aid kit or your fire extinguisher? However, if they had a locked option here in the consumables that was only available for fireworks and smoke and, and sparklers, it would allow you to use your first aid kit and use fireworks. If you didn't use your fireworks, well, it's not like you got an extra, uh, an extra consumable slot for your equipment. It would only be available, you know, because we, we obviously, Wargaming does not want to have it to where you can have the uh, first aid kit and the fire extinguisher. This would allow you people to actually use the fireworks and the smoke. Right now, nobody uses that because it's pointless because nobody wants to be at a disadvantage. Anyway, side discussion. So as you earn candy canes, you'll be moving down the path here. And there's actually some really good uh, prizes here. So during the the um, the whole mission time frame, once you've gotten to this point, you're earning 10% uh, credits during your battle, 10% buff to your credits. Um, continue on, you get 70 candy canes. Now you can start earning 10% crew experience. 166 candy canes, you're getting 10% free experience. 272 candy canes, and you're now getting 10% aircraft experience buff. Really, really, um, really, really helpful, especially if you're grinding during this time of year anyway. There's also going to be a lot of parts. There's some crates that are going to be available. There's some mediocre premium planes, but hey, take them. Uh, F2A is earned at, what, just 13? 13 candy canes? Holy cow, you can get that pretty quickly. There's going to be also be some things like intensive training. There's going to be uh, five-point pilots for random planes. Uh, so there's a lot. There's part. There's equipment. Um, experimental equipment is incredibly impactful. So any experimental equipment that you can get, um, take it and run. Uh, Model 81A just got a very small buff. Um, it only got a 10% buff to its two machine guns. So I think it's like 18 damage per second. Uh, yeah. Okay. We'll take that. Um, further along, though, once you get past the um, you know the 200 point. You're going to be able to earn yourself a, a really good, actually, Tier 5 Premium, the Bowfighter 5. Get some more pilots, some more gold, some more uh, equipment, I mean, um, hangar slots, some more tokens. Always nice. Um, and you can even get, now we're, now we're getting to the big stuff here, where you can get these um, Grafalcon tokens, uh, trophies, excuse me. And eventually, 
you can get yourself the XFY-1. Um, I was wondering, you know, researching this plane before I saw what the metrics were or anything like that, I was wondering why in the world are we having this plane as a premium? It was a very, very quick failure um, as a plane. The whole concept uh, didn't last very long. The plane is set up to, to, to do vertical takeoff and landing. So it's basically a helicopter that can turn into a, a plane, basically. Um, I'm kind of wondering what it looks like in the hangar now. Uh, we'll see. Then I saw the paint scheme on it, and I go, oh, it's a, they wanted a plane that could look like a Christmas tree at all times. And yes, this plane is delta wing, and the tail is huge, uh, basically a sideways delta wing to allow for it to take have a vertical takeoff. Um, and so yeah, this looks like this fits this fits the Christmas motif for sure. But is this plane going to be something that we're going to see out on the battlefield in three months? Is an XFY-1 Pogo going to be a plane that anybody plays for more than a handful of battles after they've won it? And so let's take a quick compare here of the XFY-1 compared to some other Tier 8 American Premium planes that you can get in the game. A P-80A, you can get at all times. Um, it's available in, you know, for gold or for money in the Premium Shop. XF-15C is a plane that's available from time to time, um, but not, not all the time. And then here's the XFY-1. We're just going to do a quick comparison on... Uh, Wargaming's World of Warplanes own compare aircraft um, chart here. I don't have the XF-15 or the XFY, of course, uh, but that's why I figured this would be the easiest way to, to compare it. We're going to talk about it and see what my expectations are of the plane. Uh, what's really funny is the P-88 now has the highest gun armament number um, because of the buff to the machine guns. The range and the damage output on the P-88 have been increased. The damage output's now like 518. The range is right around 2,100 feet, 633 um, meters. Um, these two planes might have a lower number, but their their guns are the same. They're 20 millimeter cannons with significantly lar uh, longer um, range on the cannons. And so, in most re in most aspects, you'd actually probably would rather have the 20 millimeter cannons that come on these planes. They do slightly less damage, but do critical damage and can hit further out. But all in all, okay, we'll just say they're all basically the same as far as the overall uh, impact in the game. Survivability on the XFY is right there. It's it's just slightly above average. I noticed the average for um, American planes, uh, fighters, is going to be this 360. And so 400 is slightly helpful. Um, but it's, you know, it's not going to make any huge difference, I think, in the game. XF-15C, keep in mind, has a prop and a jet. And I think because of that combination and the way that the plane is built, you've actually got more hit points on the XF-15C. Um, airspeed on the XFY is a much lower number than the other two. That's, that's not surprising, to be honest. I wasn't expecting this plane to be fast. It's, it's kind of a trick plane. It's meant to take off and land vertically. So it's not about its airspeed. It's about its flexibility. Um, that being said... The airspeed, we're going to jump ahead here really quick. I was really expecting the rate of climb to be a lot higher. Considering the XFY is built to take off vertically, it's literally built to take off while it's standing up. You would like to think its rate of climb would be pretty high. Um, and it's actually pretty low. It's lower than the P-51H that I've looked up. Um, and it's lower than the XF-15C. It's significantly lower than a jet in the P-80A. So I'm pretty disappointed in that, to be honest. But all right, so your airspeed is lower than the other two. Again, not overly surprising, although the maximum dive speed is pretty high. Um, its overall airspeed, the, the top speed, is lower. And so your, your airspeed with the um, XFY, you know, be mindful of that. The maneuverability numbers are middling at best, um, definitely lower than the PADA and even lower than the um, something like the P-51H. Now, keep in mind, um, it's kind of a mixed bag number, that's 61. The actual average turn time is pretty good. It's not the best. It's not turn fighter-esque. But it's not, um, you know, it's not a, a complete turd when it comes to turning. 10.8 is a solid number. The rate of roll is pretty significant on this plane. Right up there with the P-88, which has a great rate of roll. Um, 
you would think that the XFY one would have good rate of roll because it kind of looks like it's an you know it's arrow shaped, right? So you've got your your feathers there in the back, allow it to spin pretty easily. Um, and so you know that that number is really I think going to be based on its um, you know its optimum airspeed is going to be lower, and so that's what lowers the uh, maneuverability number for this plane. It does seem like it's not a turn fighter, but not uh, a complete boom and zoom type plane, which is good because it doesn't really have a whole lot of zoom, it looks like. And again, the altitude performance, the actual optimum altitude is right there in line with everything else. Um, P51H and an ME209 are going to have better overall altitude. Again, the thing I'm really disappointed with on paper in the XFY is its rate of climb. Uh, we'll see its actual impact in battle. Those 20 millimeter cannons might make up for its, uh, you know, lack of rate of climb. It might make up for uh, its its lack of airspeed. We'll just have to see once I get it, because I will be earning it. By golly, uh, we'll see if it's worth the um, worth the grind. Speaking of worth. Uh, if you wanted to buy the XFY-1 straight out, um, it would be $99. Now, if all you were getting was the plane for $99, I'd 100% say totally not worth it. No tier 8 premium is worth the $99. No offense, we're gaming. However, do keep in mind, A, it's your money and do with it as you choose. But the $99 will also, it, what the $99 gives you is 600 candy canes. And so the 600 candy canes is going to be getting you all the stuff that you would be earning on this line here you know all the all the extra consumables that you get the premium planes the experimental equipment the random pilots for things like a ju 87g um i don't know why these particular pilots are being thrown at us but i mean take them spitfire 5 pilot um uh, i think one was a pe2 pilot right something like that yeah so the pilots that you get the experimental equipment the boosters that you earn. Okay, you know, is that worth the ninety-nine dollars plus the plus the four um, premium planes that you'll earn, plus these um, um, trophies that you'll earn, you know, plus the slots, plus the premium time. That's to your discretion. Oh, look, there's more. You get um, steel trophies. That that's completely up to you, right? I can't tell you how to spend your money. Ninety-nine dollars is a lot, uh, but if you want to fly on Christmas tree. You can tell me down below if you've already got it and if it's any good. Uh, you know, nobody's going to argue and say, hey, we don't want you to tell us if it's any good. We want to know um, if this grind is going to be worth it. I'm going to be doing the grind even if the plane's crap because of all those extras, you know, because of the experimental equipment, because of the premium planes. I don't have a Bowfighter 5 because of the boosters and all that kind of stuff. Totally worth it, especially if you're still new to the game. I think it's worth not the ninety nine dollars. The grind itself is worth it to me, and I've got you know all the planes that uh, <coughs> all but one tier ten plane in the game. I already have, so you know getting extra bonus credits and stuff like that is, is minimal impact to me. But to somebody that's new to the game or, or hasn't grinded out um, a lot of the lines, this event's going to be really helpful for your bottom line, for your credit earning ability, for your cre uh, your tech line grinding it's going to be a great time to be able to do that kind of stuff so i highly encourage you to take advantage of the event whether or not you get the plane the event's going to be worth the impact to your bottom line as far as earning new planes is concerned and that's definitely a good thing i hope this was helpful i know it was a lot um but uh, i'm just trying to give a, a broad overview of everything that's going on and um yeah so if you if this was helpful feel free to tell me um, if this was completely not helpful, thumb me down. I don't mind. I need to know how I can get better, right? Uh, and that kind of stuff does help me. Otherwise, feel free to hop in my Discord. Uh, there's a link in the description below. And we can continue the discussion there as well. Thank you so much and have a great day and best of luck. Bye.